Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. Uh, Governor Mike DeWine just had his primetime address uh, talking about coronavirus in Ohio. So I'm just gonna break that down for you so you get the all the important parts out of that. If you have any questions throughout this whole thing, feel free to drop them here. I'll keep checking to see if I can answer them. And something important to note is that after this, there will be two more Facebook Lives with this information translated into both Spanish and Arabic. So if you know someone who needs this information in those languages, share those streams with them, or if you prefer to hear this information in those languages, check those out as well. So I am just going to dive right into the nuts and bolts here. I'm gonna click my computer and try to see if I see any of your questions yet. Okay, I do not see it yet. So let's just go right into it. So Dwayne kind of did everything under the sun. I would feel like he uh, announced a new order. He made updates to a current order and he said more orders could be on the way should things not improve. So the new order will be coming later this week. Um, it affects open congregate areas like banquet halls and the like. So more specifics are to come, but everyone will need to be seated and masked at these facilities unless actively consuming food or drinking and no dancing or games will be allowed because of that contact. So the state's limit on gatherings of more than 10 people is still in effect. Um, he said, despite this order, they've seen a lot of spread happening at banquet halls and weddings and at funerals, but noted that a lot of the spread isn't happening during the ceremonies, it's happening at the parties afterwards. So this order is meant to kind of negate some of the spread in these arenas. So he did make some adjustments to the current mask order. Again, we are still under a mask order in the state of Ohio. So he reissued that and made some adjustments. So these adjustments mostly impact businesses. Each business will be required to post a face covering requirement sign at their entrances. The store is also responsible for making sure customers and workers are wearing masks at all times. Um, the point he said is that retail workers have a right to feel safe while they're at work and uh, customers should feel safe coming to the business. So it kind of works both both ways there. And a new retail compliance unit comprised of Bureau of Workers' Compensation Employees will continue to ensure businesses are complying. So that's gonna be similar to the Ohio Investigative Unit that's looking into bars and restaurants. So something important here is that there are um, consequences for violations. For a first violation, there's just a written warning. Um, but if there is a second violation, the business could close its doors for up to 24 hours. Um, and in terms of bars and restaurants, Dwine said that they are able to stay open for now, but he did warn that if the virus continues on its current trajectory, uh, that they may be forced to close bars, restaurants, and fitness centers. However, that has not been put into effect yet. He said that his team will be reevaluating next week. I believe that will be Thursday of next week. We should get more information on what he plans to do with bars, restaurants, and fitness centers. So before I get into some of the data, and before I do a recap, I'm gonna see if I can see any of these comments here. I do see there are some. Let's see, I'm not sure I'm seeing questions. Okay, yep, mostly just comments, which is totally fine. I will try to find, um, if you have a question, I'll try to find it. Uh, but as comments come in, it might be hard to spot. So I'll go back later and answer that if I don't do it live. Um, so I am going to get into some of the data here. Today, we have 5,874 new cases, which is the second highest daily increase that the state has had. Yesterday was the highest. We set the record yesterday with 6,508. So in September, for reference, we were averaging less than 1,000 cases a day. So it is kind of... Um, jumping up quite a bit there. Dwine did acknowledge, I, I've seen this point a lot as well, that a lot of people believe that the increase in case numbers is just directly related to an increase in testing. But Dwine noted that, yes, we are increased increasing testing by a bit, uh, but that number hasn't even doubled yet. But when we're seeing new cases, those case numbers have nearly quadrupled. So 
the increase in testing isn't quite matching up with the increase in case numbers, which is why experts believe there is um, a great increase in spread in the communities. So another point to go along with that, we need to look at our area hospitals. So during the spring and summer surges, the most people in the hospital at one time was just over 1,100, but last week that number was almost 2,000, and then today that number's jumped up to almost 3,000. So it's, it's continuing to jump up here. So there are now a record number of people in the ICU. Last month, there were 240 patients compared to the current number of 700. Uh, in the first week of November, 104 Ohioans have sadly died from COVID-19. So something important to talk about here, this is something that actually Lucas County brought up last month. And then on Monday, as a state, it was brought up and DeWine addressed it again. Hospitals are getting concerned about reaching capacity. They are they are getting close to a point of concern here, but it's not really due to a lack of beds or PPE or any of those material items. It's really due to the fact that they are losing out on a lot of trained personnel because the hospital workers, the nurses, they live and work in these communities. So they're not really getting sick at work. These nurses might be exposed to the virus out in their community. So what's, what's happening is nurses or other hospital staff are getting sick or they're getting exposed. So they need to stay home and either isolate or quarantine. And when you take that staff away, uh, something that noted by Lucas County last month, uh, one healthcare worker gone can impact the care for 10 people. So when you take that healthcare worker away, that puts a strain on the resources they have to care for people, not just in there for COVID, but in there for the flu or any other reason you might go to the hospital, like a heart attack or a car crash. So they're getting very concerned, not about bed space or PPE, but about the health of their healthcare workers, because it's getting harder and harder for them to avoid the virus when they're out living their life in the community. So that's been a huge talking point for the past couple of weeks here, um, locally and throughout the state of Ohio. So I am gonna check again on the stream and see if I see any questions. I do see something about a vaccine. So that is one point of optimism that DeWine had today and that the healthcare leaders had on Monday is that we are inching closer and closer to a vaccine. Pfizer announced that their potential vaccine after it's limited testing, but they found that it could be as effective as 90%, which is a lot better than what uh, experts were initially anticipating. So they were getting very excited. And once we get that vaccine, it'll really be a turning point in the virus. That's what these leaders have been saying. Um, but we're not quite there yet, but it is in sight. So their focus has been on mitigating the damage while we wait for the vaccine to get approved and to be able to be distributed. And once it is distributed, DeWine says the state is ready to do so with uh, frontline workers and with the most vulnerable being top priority. So that's what we know about the vaccine right now. Let me see if I can see any of these comments. Are there any more questions? Again, um, I see, I've seen this sentiment a couple of times. People are saying because there's a focus on COVID, people are ignoring other illnesses. I think the, the, the issue here is because COVID's increasing, it's leaving less resources than for the other, the other illnesses and other issues, which is again, why the focus and the concern has been on healthcare workers because the less people you have there, the less people you have to care for the COVID patients who are increasingly going to the hospital but then as we approach flu season and once we get more flu patients and all the other reasons you go to the hospital that's where the concern really lies because of course there's more out there than just covid but covid does pull away from resources for other patients so i hope i hope that that does make sense so that's why they're really encouraging flu shots this year because they're trying to lessen the impact of the flu to try and reserve those resources okay So, okay, Renee's asking about casinos. He didn't specifically mention anything about casinos. I'm not sure. I don't think that would be considered the open congregate area. I think that's more like banquet halls and the things that you rent out for private parties and that sort of thing. But we should get more clarification on that, hopefully tomorrow or maybe sometime next week. Again, he didn't say anything about casinos specifically. And even with the 
open congregate area order. We don't know all the specifics just yet. So more to come on that. But with that, I'm going to jump back and do a recap of some of the things I already talked about for anyone just jumping on. Go back to the beginning here. So like I said at DeWine's primetime address today, he added new orders, he adjusted an old order, and he uh, announced that more orders could come if things don't improve. So that open congregate area order that we were just talking about, that would impact businesses like banquet halls. That's supposed to be signed sometime later this week or maybe early next. Um, more specifics are to come, but basically he said they're going to be kind of restrictive. Uh, most people will have to be seated and masked at all times unless they're actively eating or drinking and that there shouldn't be any games or dancing, um, again, because of that contact those activities have. So that's the gist of what's to come. It isn't in effect yet. Um, and he did send a reminder that the state's limit on gatherings of 10 people or more is still in effect. Um, and despite this order, spread has really been happening at weddings, funerals, um, and the like, but it's not happening at the ceremonies, it's at the parties after. I think usually the more formal settings, uh, the guidelines are strictly followed, and then once you get into more lax environment, they're not followed as strictly. So this order is supposed to help cut down on that. The mask order that, again, we're still under, Dwine reissued that and added some things to it, mostly impacting businesses. So what does that do? Each business will be required to post a face covering sign at their entrances. The store, uh, the store is responsible for making sure customers and workers are wearing masks and a new retail compliance unit comprised of Bureau of Workers' Compensation Employees will work to ensure businesses are complying. So I think that's gonna work a lot like the Ohio Investigative Unit does with bars and restaurants right now. So for a business's first violation, they just get a written warning, but if they have a second violation, they could be closed for up to 24 hours. And in terms of bars and restaurants, um, basically nothing's happening yet, but he did warn that bars, restaurants, and fitness centers could close again if things don't improve, but his team will be reevaluating the situation and thinking more about that a week from tomorrow, he said. So stay tuned on all of that. And I did go through some data here. Let me just look at today's data, actually, since it's behind me. So today we had the second highest daily increase of cases with 5,874. And as you can see, I hope you can see at least, the average is just 3,779 per reference back in September. This was averaging under 1,000, so it is steadily climbing. Um, deaths are at 76 reported today compared to the average of 23, and that number does seem jarring, but I, something I want to remind you all, I've said it before, deaths reported today don't necessarily equal deaths um, that happened today. A coroner has six months or so to certify a death, so it doesn't usually take that long, but these deaths don't mean that they happened today. It's a, it's just what was reported today, so keep that in mind when you see that number. Um, hospitalizations is at 253 today compared to 179, and ICU admissions is at 36 compared to the 21 day average of 23. So that's today. Um, again, today is the second highest daily increase in cases. Yesterday was the highest with 6,508. Um, so that's some of the data. And I will reiterate the point with the hospitals. We are seeing more and more people being hospitalized due to COVID. So the concern we are getting concerned about the capacity getting reached in the hospitals, but again, it's not due to bed space and it's not due to PPE. It's due to workers potentially getting sick or being in quarantine because if you pull them away, then they won't be able to be bedside and care for COVID patients, flu patients, or anyone else who comes to the hospital. So it's getting harder for them to avoid the virus in the community because you know they live and they work and they have their lives in the community. So it's harder for them to avoid it there um, in the hospital, they have a lot of protective equipment, so they're not really catching it there as much. So the emphasis has really been on slowing the spread for our healthcare workers, for our schools, because as community spread continues to happen, uh, schools continue to go remote, even though spread isn't really happening as much in the schools. Um, it does still have an impact on the school as a whole. So again, let me look at the comments one more time and then I'm probably gonna tune off here. Let me see. Let's see, they're coming in quick. It's hard for me to read. I 
Okay. Great. Okay. I'm going to go through these afterwards to see if there's any questions that I missed that I can answer. You can always text us too at 419-248-1100. We do our best to get you verified information. So even if I don't get to you here, you can send a text there. And as a reminder, when I sign off here, there will be two more Facebook Lives with all of this translated into both Spanish and in Arabic. So if you don't need that information in those languages, you can come back here or you can read our web story. Or if you know someone who does need that information in those languages, share those streams with them. And if you want that information for yourself, go for it. Um, but again, I am going to sign off here. I see my coworkers did send the link to the article so you can get all the same information there as well. Uh, but for now, I can't end it from here so you'll see my grand exit. But thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday.